Howdy guys, uh, here's an update on the chair. Um, so I've managed to uh, close most of the gap on that left lower side. So the distance at the top between the two uprights is now exactly spot on. Uh, so it matches the, uh, the cross piece exactly so it won't be under any tension when I mount it. So I've just refitted and re-glued the lower uh, cross piece. Um, and so when I have uh, finalized on how to join the top cross piece to the uprights, um, yeah, that will be, I guess the final stage will be gluing the top cross piece with the uh, two vertical inserts. Um, so as I mentioned, the tenon on the top here got uh, broken off. So I'll have to replace that, I'll have to make a mortise there, and uh, I'll have a mortise on the upright as well, and then a floating tenon. And uh, still not sure what I'm going to do here. The original tenon is still there, um, but all the wood surrounding it is in terrible shape. Um, so I may cut all that back to the tenon, and then see how to uh, restore um, the mortise piece on top. Um, so the tenon itself had snapped and was uh, sitting in here. Um, it wasn't glued in properly or it wasn't solid um, and so I screwed a screw into the end of it and just used a puller so I could pull it out. But as you can see, not exactly a, uh, a tight fit here. And so what somebody had done originally at some point in the past has had uh, they had wrapped some fabric around the tenon and put it in to try and um, glue it. I don't know what this is. It actually looks a little bit like a a a, a, a fabric a plaster that you use to uh, um, dress a cut on your finger or something. Um, um, so yes. Uh, and the reason it's so sloppy in here is, um, let me get a pointer of some sort, um, is you can see there's a crack running along here. And so um, it hasn't broken off, but there is a crack which runs up along here and here, and it isn't closed properly. Um, and so this mortise is too wide. So, um, I've dressed up that mortar slot and uh, got all the glue out of it, cleaned it all up and uh, I'll have to put a mortise on the upright and then use some sort of a hardwood um, piece to uh, make a tenon to join them both up. So that's next on the list. Um, other work to do is on the uh, right upright piece, uh, the tenon is well, almost half of it is not there, as you can see, right? Um, so, uh, I'm probably... So there's only really that much of tenon that's going to be uh, of any use, which is just about half. And so I need to look at a way of replacing the rest of this tenon. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be interesting. So that's the next task to do, and of course, then the most challenging piece of all is what am I going to do with this end of the upright? Because um, most of the wood that's missing is actually stuck to the upright, and uh, the, because it's been uh, separated, if you like, parted for so long, um, it isn't going to really give me a good surface to surface joint for glue, so uh, yeah, not sure what to do with that piece yet. Yeah, on this, um, as well as the tenon, um, there is the fact that there looks to be what, what seems to me anyway to be like fire damage along the back here because this wood is extremely hard and brittle um, and had been previously re glued along here but not properly so it was actually this piece was actually movable so no structural integrity so I've tried to get that re-glued so it's totally uh, there's no movement here everything is solid there's still some gaps and stuff that I'll 
um, fill in and there's also some hairline cracks which are a little bit worrying so I might just try and wick um, some very um, light um, super glue into those just as a safety precaution I even noticed that across the back of the uh, upright, I don't know if you can see it, there is actually a crack running right along a grain here and so I might try and wick something into that as well because it's not open at all but you can definitely see it um, and that's in a, obviously a pretty critical part of the uh, center of the back of uh, cross piece. Um, so there we go, still plenty to do um, yeah, interesting. So to um, add the uh, uh, missing piece of tenon, um, I've tidied up the, uh, cut off all the old remnants that were no good. I got a bit of uh, rosewood that I'm going to pop on there. And I thought to uh, secure it, um, I'm going to need some pins. Uh, some metal pins ideally, because there's so little room here. Um, if I just pinned it with wood, I wouldn't have any real strength. Um, so I uh, made up a couple of metal pins um, with um, uh, with the shafts of a couple of wood screws um, that I just cut off. And so they fit nicely. Uh, they're about a half the width of the tenon. And um, since it's a metal to wood type thing here, I'll probably use a dual part epoxy for putting all this lot together uh, rather than uh, wood glue. Right, let's see what it looks like. Okay, here's the, um, the piece with the holes drilled and the uh, metal pins inserted. They're not glued yet. And then beside it, you can see the uh, rosewood blank um, all ready to go. Um, so, mix up the epoxy and uh, see how that goes. Um, incidentally, while I have them out here, any of you guys who've ever made the investment in a set of uh, jobbers drills will know that it's a great investment. You know, whatever size hole you need to drill, you got it. And yeah, I know my bench is a mess. Once I get this uh, set up, I'll have a tidy up. Right, a bit more work on the uh, upper cross piece for the back. Um, so as I think I mentioned, rather nasty looking hairline crack here. Um, don't know you can, there you go, you can see it. Um, so I decided to see how deep it was. I'd see if I could wick some um, very thin super glue into the crack. And sure enough, it took quite a lot. So the crack is pretty deep. So uh, hopefully it's secured at this point. Um, so uh, we shall see. Um, also notice the hairline crack coming out of this here. Um, I'm not gonna. I have no plans to repair this at the moment. I'll leave that as part of the history of the thing. But I did wick a fair amount of uh, super glue in there as well to uh, make sure that crack didn't grow further down there. And of course the um, the joints at either end. There's a hair. There's a crack running across here goes over to this side and then runs along to about here so again I wicked a lot of super glue in here until it came out in the uh, in the mortise and then I did likewise over here um, and of course there is a, another crack um, bear with me get some light on the matter uh, there is a crack actually runs along here and uh, round there into where the uh, um, mortise, original mortise cavity is. So hopefully that's all the cracks. Um, hopefully structurally this thing is stable now and it's not going to give any more trouble. Um, so uh, let's have a look at the next little uh, challenge. So here is the cross piece, the lower cross piece, glued in and that seems to be reasonably successful at this point. Um, However, uh, another little challenge pops in when you start to uh, put the rest of the pieces back on. So this is the left upright piece. Um, I can't put on the right one for the moment because it's, uh, it's
it's has its new uh, tendon piece uh, gluing. Okay, so when we put this on and uh, we line it up with this end, we have a huge gap over here, which means that the uh, somehow the distance between the upper and lower cross pieces has uh, either uh, reduced or uh, this repair was done in a not quite right away when it was originally done. So I'm going to wait until I can put the second upright piece in to decide what to do with that. But I did check meticulously the the, the distance from the from the base of the chair to the upper surface here is exactly the same on both sides. So it's not like this end is up higher or anything. It's exactly parallel to the seat. Um, and uh, yeah, I fitted the uh, the uh, wood with the pins on here, so when I leave that uh, at least 24 hours to set up, and then I'll um, I'll shape the remainder of the tenon, so I have full tenon on the base of that, and uh, then it will go in here, and then we'll see exactly what needs to be done on that side. So we're getting there. Um, it's uh, looking a lot better. I'm going to do the tenon on this side first and make sure I'm really happy with that. And then finally we'll leave the, uh, the really nasty bit until the end.